Galatians chapter 6 and verse 17. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Tell somebody, don't trouble me. Come on, tell the next person. From now on, don't trouble me. <laughs> I want you to tell another person, say, as of tonight, don't trouble me. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Can somebody praise the Lord? Can somebody magnify the Lord? You see, I realized that I was afraid of going back. Because when I go back, there was too much pain. And there's always the tendency to escape. There's always the tendency to want to forget. How many of you are here who have had a bad relationship, have had a bad marriage, and there is the tendency to forget? Give me a little more volume because my voice, I've been praying all week and my voice is just ruined. I've been, I prayed two nights this week. I prayed all night till six o'clock in the morning because I wanted victory here this weekend. Give God praise. Who knows that sometimes when your past is filled with pain, you don't want to remember it. You want to forget. Are you here? Come on, come on, come on somebody. I want to feel you here tonight. As a pastor, I have had the opportunity to counsel many people. And I find that there are some dark spots that some people would rather forget. And sometimes in the midst of that darkness is their deepest and strongest and most powerful testimony. Sometimes you get a song out of it. He brought me out all right. All right. He brought me out. All right. But there is the tendency to forget. To let bygones be bygones. So I did not want to remember yesterday. It was too painful. I got called to the ministry in 1982. Didn't know much about the Bible, but I was excited. Didn't know much about church folks, but I was excited. Didn't know that church folks backbite. Didn't know that they can tear you like dogs. Oh, young and just filled with zeal and ran off to Bible school. I didn't go to Bible school to become any pastor. I wanted to learn about God. You see, when you meet God, you want to know him. Paul said that, oh, Paul said, I spent my whole life wanting to know him, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And so I went off to Bible school. could barely preach. And when I went off, because I was young and zealous 
I started getting all kinds of invitation to run crusades. Never, never ever been in any crusade before. I mean, I've been in crusade, never preached in any crusade before. But you know, they hear that you're going Bible school, they figure you're brilliant and that you're anointed. The very first crusade I went in and I preached, when I spoke there that night, there were some Bible students and they, when they went home, I, they tore the sermon apart. They said, you think that's how people preach? They said, man, you must go look another career. But God is a good God. Who knows God is good? The pastor one night asked one of the biggest critics, one who led the criticism to preach, and everybody fell asleep on him. I said, at least I got some hallelujah and praise the Lord. At least I wasn't saying much, but I was moving and keeping some the people's attention. And so they called me to a crusade. The first night I preached, it was okay. The second night, the Monday night, I was so embarrassed. It was such a horrible sermon. Then hear me to make up for it. Tomorrow night is healing night. You see now, I'm ashamed now. So I'm pretending like I have something more. When I look the night, people sat down on window. The church was popped. Everybody come for healing. People come in all kind of way. People who couldn't walk get somebody carry them. My Lord, I was trembling like leaf. What is this I did? But the Lord gave me a sermon from John chapter 14 where it says, ask of me anything. Somebody say anything. You see, you're that, and he said, ask of me anything and I will do it. But one translation says, ask of me anything and if I don't have it, I will make it and give it to you. the church what's your anything is your anything arthritis be healed of your arthritis is your anything cancer be healed of cancer what's your anything be healed of your anything come on help me tonight because maybe healing is in the house tell somebody be healed of your anything that night there was a big line after and I prayed until I was tired but I went home disappointed because I didn't see anything happen so next night I decided I'm going to spend all day and fast in the next day and I'm going to try and get a good sermon and forget about the healing thing but the next night, no room for preaching. Oh, testimony time. People just started running. Mm, I couldn't walk on one foot. And after pastor, I wasn't pastor, I was brother. When brother Henry prayed for me, and when I was walking home, I was limping, still going home. But on my way home, the limp stopped. And I started walking. Woo! You see, I didn't understand miracle because I thought that miracle had to happen in church. I didn't realize that when church is over, the Holy Ghost is still working. God you know they 
have this thing. I heard this ad many years ago that Colgate toothpaste works long after you finish brushing. And I realized that when I am finished that the Holy Ghost is still working. And when I'm sleeping, the Spirit of God is still working. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody help me praise Almighty God. Miracles, miracles. People testify until I was ashamed because I didn't know how to respond. Then when people heard about the miracle, everybody invited me to preach. Everybody wanted me to preach. I couldn't go to my church. Sometimes for four months, I didn't go to my church. Every weekend I was out, me and my pastor got in hot water. He said, where you belong, where you worship. You get in trouble with pastor now. Too much things happening. Pastor wanted to see me in the pew. When I got there Sunday morning, he glad to see me. He didn't even, he so vexed with me, he don't even ask me to pray. So next week I have the other, the other invitation, so I begin to sneak away. <laughs> Until so many miracles, so many things started happening, and the enemy came in. There's a the church had a function and the people who planned the function invited all the MPs and all the politicians to come. I was a person who didn't like politicians at the time, never mixed with politicians. I was upset with them. They invited, you know, in Jamaica, they invited JLP, PNP, the MP, the, the, the mayor, they invited all these politicians to the church. So we were having a dinner. I was getting engaged, not to this lady though, different lady. Not, not my wife. She <laughs> supposed to get engaged the following week. So I was announcing it. And when I stood up to announce it and said, finally I met the young lady that I'm supposed to marry and blah, blah. When I was announcing it, somebody touched me on my shoulder and said, Pastor, the member of parliament is outside. So I turned and said, let him wait. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting engaged next week. <laughs> and everybody began to ask me, who is it? And I said, I said, I, I said, guess. And then they touched me and I said, pastor, the, name and the other MP come. I said, listen, tell them to wait. Then they came and told me that the mayor come and I have to come. And I left. I went, I did not know they were going to stay so long because it was like maybe about 4 o'clock in the evening and they stayed till about 7 o'clock. I was with them all at this time. One of the young ladies that was at the table went and told people that I was, that I told her I was going to marry to her. I didn't know this. I hear this rumor that I'm going to marry to this other young lady and I want to know who is this woman? And everybody heard of this and hear that brother Henry had two girlfriends and he has he engaged to two women. And I know I keep asking everybody with the rumor, who is the second woman? They say you must know. You must know who. And I kept going around and some of no, I mean, people who claim they were my friends would not tell me who the second woman is. They say, you know who? You know. Until finally, I put one of one lady on the spot. And I said, I want to know who that, sec that person is. And I wanted to know who started that scandal. And she said, she went in the same thing already. You must know who. People couldn't say that unless you know who. And then, finally she told me who it was. And that night, boy, I was so angry. I didn't sleep. I tried to pray, but I couldn't pray. 
Met her the morning and boy, I wanted to wheel a fish now. And when I was asking about her, the woman grabbed me up and took off her heel and began to wax me in the head. And then the biggest scandal break out that Pastor Henry break out fighting church yard. That was the very next day I was supposed to get ordained. Scandal. From that, nobody wanted me to preach. Pastor, my pastor called me up before the board and, and uh, declared all his declaration and said all the things. And then when he, he was finished, he said, come on now, defend yourself. And I said to them, I said, let the righteous smite me. I shall count it as kindness. And they said, they begged me and said, Pastor, you defend yourself. I said, let the righteous smite me. I shall count it as kindness. I said, can I be excused from this meeting? And the other members begin to beg me and say, please defend yourself because they really loved me. Eh? And I said, defend myself. I have defended myself and I need not because there I have my defender in heaven. He's a king of kings and he's a lord of lords and he's a conquering lord of the tribe of Judah and he shall break my chain and give me the victory. When I thought the scandal was over, it just began. I went down and I stepped on the scale. I weighed 126 pounds. I was skin and bone. I reached a place where I felt like I was going mad. I reached into depression. I had every symptom of a nervous breakdown. I began to stare in space and people asked me, what are you looking at? And I didn't even realize I had every kind of syndrome. If you know anything about nervous breakdown, there are different symptoms of nervous breakdown. I had the withdrawal syndrome, syndrome where I was always wanting to be by myself never want to be around people I went into the mood swing where sometimes I feel happy and laugh like I was an idiot ha <laughs> ha and there are times when I began to, when I begin to get angry. I went through all the mood swings. I sometimes I became depressed. Sometimes I went into anxiety. Oh, I'm telling you. Then I then there was a syndrome, the 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 um the strange syndrome where I would take a bus and go off and come off and don't know why I, I took the bus and why I went where I went. And one day I began to hold my head and said, God, I'm going to go mad. For four nights I did not sleep. And I said, God, I'm going to go mad. I found myself walking on the street, talking to myself. And then people said, who are you talking to? And when I catch up myself, I said, oh, I said, I said, listen, it's in my family, man. My father always talked to himself. But I didn't even realize that I was walking street talking to myself. And one day I said, God, I can't take this anymore. I can't. And it looked as though God wasn't going to come through for me. And one night, one Monday morning, I was in a deep sleep. And I jumped out of my bed and I saw a huge white gentleman standing over me. I still remember him. He had a huge nose too. Pronounced nose. His hair was long, flowing down on his shoulder. His, 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 his robe was so white uh, and it was it as though someone had, it, uh, he had just taken it out of a laundry. It was stiff. It was, you know, when you start something and iron it and it was, it was stiff. And I saw him and, when I, and I cried out and I said, ah! And right away he said, 
Fear not. I am Gabriel. And the Lord has sent me to strengthen you. And immediately I didn't see any hands. But immediately I saw a hand come from under the right sleeve. And the hand came and touched me. Held my forehead. <coughs> and I heard my head begin to fry like when you put raw meat inside inside of a hot frying pan it's just going sss. and I closed my eyes and when I opened my eyes I didn't see him but I started looking for him because I had some questions for him but the man disappeared on me and I couldn't find him so I got up and I, I didn't know what to do 4 o'clock in the morning and I began to pace the room and I wanted to go up but it was dark and then I decided to make up the bed and when I was making up the bed I felt an anointing inside of the sheet I felt power inside of the sheet when I spread the bed I feel like the sheet dragging me on top of the bed and I said what is this and when I touch it I feel like voltage was inside of the sheet so I went under the sheet because I remember the song cover me cover me extend the border of thy garment over me because thou art my nearest kinsman so I cover up for myself with the sheep. Amazing. I lick an old sheet wash out it was a flower sheet but it was so much until you couldn't see the flowers are you really mean that god passed all those dignitaries and come and anoint this little piece of old tissue which have hole in it you mean my god you mean god no more troubles jesus knows all about my troubles he There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. So I got up in the early morning and I walked down to my pastor friend's house and I said to him, I said, his name is Bunny. I said, Bunny, Bunny. Guess what? Gabriel visited me this morning. You see, he knew my troubles, you see. Because when I didn't have any food to eat, Bunny used to give me dinner. Many days, I ate one meal. And it was Bunny who gave me. Because I didn't, you see, when I used to preach, I used to use the offering. Some of you believe. When you see me come, somebody come to church and preach, and you hear me say, you must give the preacher an offering you don't understand. When I used to go around and preach, and when the scandal reached me, I couldn't buy food. And it was Bunny who used to feed me. And I went to his house in the morning, and I apologized. I said, sorry to come so early. But I said, Gabriel came to me this morning. And he said to me, he said, he said, but, he said, but, Brother Henry, you glowing. I said, I'm glowing. He said, yes, you're shining. And I said, no, I don't see. And he said, yes, you're shining. You're glowing. I said, yeah. I said, no, man, you're joking. He said, yes, you're shining. And I said, and I, said I don't see any light. And 
morning after I left the house and I went home and I look in the mirror, but I never see any glow. And then the whole day, every minute I look in the mirror and I'm looking for the light that he said he saw. He said, Brother Henry, your face is shining. And he began to tell me about Moses, how when Moses went up on the mountain, how Moses came back shining. He said, Brother Henry, you're shining, you're shining. And I said, I don't see the light as I can't see it. He said, I see it, you're shining. And uh, your skin and bone, my shoes that I was preaching at our church, I, I walk it down the sole until I put cardboard in there, and I walk down the cardboard. I was stepping on the box, on the on the socks, but then. I was walking on the road now. And, and then I began to say, from now on, from now on, let no man trouble me. And everybody who had critics to me, I said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Leave me near my Lord. From now on, don't trouble me. God will kill you. I went through from that never felt no depression. I'm telling you some things that the Lord opened my eyes to from that day. Hmm. So Not only, but when that happened, now I decided I get back my pride now, my self-esteem. All of the, those people who criticize me and call themselves bishop, I just say you bish up. Sorry to say that. But then I'd never afraid of no name again because that there's a spirit of boldness came inside of me where I never care about who because the Lord gave me back my confidence. Praise God. And that happened the Monday and the Wednesday a nurse lady said, hey, listen, I want you to come and preach at a crusade for me. You now I'm talking about months, you know. Never get, never get an appointment. So I said, okay, I'll come. So I went down to the church and I ministered the night at some of you church. You know, my church members hear these testimonies, you know. I ministered at the church. I was preaching for the week. And in the middle of the night, I think it was one Wednesday night, she said to me that they want to have a street meeting. And I said, I don't like preaching on street, you know, because I preach with notes and I can't see my notes on street. And when I preach on street, I can't, I don't like doing it. And she said, no, we have to have a street meeting. So they went out there and they started the singing and the crowd started coming. And I, and then the, the only word I had that night was, to, was taken from the book of Obadiah. Hallelujah. When this, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a rumor from the Lord concerning this place. Ooh, I'm telling you, when I began to preach the night, I don't know. You want to hear about utterance? Somebody say utterance. Utterance is when God gives you the ability to speak. I'm telling you, the words were just flowing out of my mouth. And while I was preaching in the night, they had a little light. I couldn't see everybody. I couldn't see all the faces. But I was preaching and I made an altar call and a few people came forward. The next Monday, somebody called me and said, you don't hear what happened in the, the same spot where you preach the message. 
message there's a rumor from the lord destruction the same spot there was a young man who was jealous over his his girlfriend his common law wife he came home from work the morning and he heard that she went to a party and he was jealous and he got his cutlass his machete and he sharpened it and he walked down the road to meet her and when he reached the very same spot where I preached the message he saw her coming up with the baby and he lifted the machete and he swung it and to defend herself she threw the baby and he chucked the baby crossway and the baby fell and died and then he ran after her and he began to chop her and he went after her neck and she slipped it and he chopped off the side of her head and her ear fell on the ground and he ran her down and he swung it and chopped off one of her arm and it fell on the ground and she ran and somebody bailed her out. Rumor from the Lord. And everywhere I go, I tell people from the Lord, don't trouble me from no one let no man trouble me can I feel somebody holding back the praise just praise God with me somebody hallelujah can somebody help me praise God can somebody worship the Lord with me Brethren, you see, when I'm telling the church to praise God, you, are you, some of you don't understand why I mean when I say you must magnify the Lord and lift him up. It, you are not praising any man. You are praising your God, Elohim, the creator God. I don't know who want to put you down. I don't know who want to scandalize you. I don't know who want to bury you and say you are dead. But I can tell you, you shall not die. But you shall live in the land of the living. And you shall see the second glory of almighty God. Scandal your name. Hallelujah. When you hear me saying, I've got a feeling everything's gonna be a riot. Everything's gonna be right now. Yeah, I've got a feeling. Everything's gonna be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Be alright. Gonna be 
Gabriel visit me and change. Everything changed. <laughs> Yes, sir. Get some big that even tell me we get too fat. Was 126 pounds. Reach up to 210 pounds. It's a change. It's a change. My pastor used to feed me. Now I begin to feed. Come on, I used to. Somebody had to feed me. Now the Lord bless me now. I am helping to feed somebody. Come. Say change. Say change. Okay, come on, help me now. Jumma, man, jumma, jumma, jumma. Help me now. Help me, help me because I feel the change. I say, say change. I say change. Come on now. I'm telling you about change. So, I went on fasting one day. I said, Gabriel, can't come and leave something with my man. He take away the depression, but I want something more than that. Archangel come in my room and leave me, sir. No way. What more than that, man? So, I was praying in church. And I step outside and I saw an airplane passing. Never travel yet, never have any passport. And I look up in the sky. And I saw the smoke, you know, when you see the smoke, just the smoke. The plane was so high I could hardly even see the plane. But I look up in the sky and the old time madman, you know, they used to call me madman, you know. And the old madman look up and say, Hey, I'm coming. And then you know, people used to see me talk to myself. No, they must say he get mad. No, he gone off this time. But then now I look around, see if anybody looking, and I never see nobody looking. So I run out to the run, I look on the plane, and I saw it going down, and I shouted again. I say, Hey, I'm coming. Come on now, say change. Say change. Come on, say change. <laughs> Ooh. Say two weeks. Say two weeks. What say? You? You're not believing change. Say two weeks. They say two weeks. Come on, man. Speak, my man. Say two weeks. I'm going to prophesy now in two weeks. Somebody here, in two weeks, you're going to get a miracle. Leave me alone. Let me prophesy. You can't change it. You can't amend it. 
you can't stop it you can't alter it you can't prevent it the Lord has spoken and yeah is yeah Woo! You don't talk about change. Say change, am I? Come here. Look. I couldn't feed myself. When I brought him home, I was weeping. This little boy, firstborn. Every day I look at him and I say, Who is your father? Because as far as I was concerned, I would mash up. Everybody said I was mash up. Can't come to nothing. Oh. <laughs> Look here. Look here. Look how miracle. To you, you only see three children, but I see miracle. Because somebody wanted to send me to the asylum. Somebody wanted to send me to the madhouse. Somebody wanted me to eat out of garbage pan. But God said change. somebody I want to get married so when you're going to get married you don't even have a bed and when I got married I never have any bed but I got married and I have one wife somebody say change say change Woo! can I preach change Some of them who used to talk me, they know backslide. Say change! Say change! Man, I feel like preaching change here, girl. So when I called you here tonight, it is not false advertising. I don't believe in false advertising. I wouldn't believe I wouldn't invite you here if I don't never believe that I have something to tell you. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. I wonder why you're holding back the praise. Somebody lift your voice and give God praise. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me. I saw you looking at deliverance and he delivered me from all of my fears. I was afraid that I was going to get mad. I was afraid that I would never be a man. Hallelujah! But I'm telling you, the Lord heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. So tonight, as I conclude my message, All of you who are here tonight, I thank you very much for coming. Your coming has enlightened me and encouraged me to go on. 
I could not preach to chairs. I wish more people were here. But if I were preaching for money or preaching the prosperity message, church would be full. I believe in prosperity. But the biggest prosperity is when you prosper in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship. Somebody praise God. Talk somebody and say prosper. Come on now. Talk somebody and say prosper. You're free to, you're, you're free to pronounce it. Say prosper. In the name of Jesus, prosper in the anointing, prosper financially, prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I conclude by saying to you tonight, I want to let you know, before I finish, we have to leave here, we, we rent this place, we have to leave. But I want to let you know, that when you get one touch, that's not all. Because when, when I got that visit, after a while a spirit of pride and rebellion came in my heart. Because I felt that instead of forgiving the people who hurt me, I felt so assured of how God defending me that I went overboard and I if I did not control myself, I had to resist myself from hating them. I had to go back in another battle and say, God, don't let me hate them. So although I got the one touch, I had to seek God years after for a touch to give me a heart of forgiveness. And the pastor who tried me and found me guilty I went to New York to a convention and he couldn't walk. He had a bad hip. And the Lord spoke to me and said, go help him. And I went and I put my arms around him and I helped him down the stairs. And I helped him and I opened the car door. And while I was holding him, the Lord said, Wesley! You must forgive. And I opened the car door and I let him in. And I shut the door. And I said goodbye, sir. And when he, the car drove off, I said, yes, Lord, I have forgiven. And he died. And I, I died. I'm free. Give God glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here tonight who needs prayer? I'm inviting you forward tonight. Whatever your need might be, I want to pray with you. I'm not going to spend all night. We're coming back here tomorrow night. Hoping we have more people. Amen. Can you stand with me? And I want you to sing the song, If I Die Before You. I want you to sing it at my funeral. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy. That floods my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, something happened. And now, and now I know. Oh, he touched me.
Since I met all sins, I met the blessed Savior. Since He cleansed me, He Jesus, and I pray for health 
my bitch will never have another seizure again. Come on, church, are you here? Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the miracles. Of in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for a touch. I pray for a touch in the name of Jesus. Touch your daughter, make us. Touch and heal. Touch and deliver. Touch and set free. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for a miracle in the house. Sister, don't become like me. Don't let it get to your heart. Be comforted. Receive the peace of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for strength in this time of weakness. I pray for power. I pray for an anointing. I pray for a blessing instead of a curse. In the name of Jesus, touch my God. Deliver and set free. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus, I command high blood pressure. Come down, you high blood pressure. You know, all I heard the Holy, I just hear the, you see, I have to obey. I don't know, you have never met me before. But if the spirit says high blood pressure, it's high blood pressure. So I can't change it. If I am wrong, heaven. But the spirit says high blood pressure, so I can't change it, sister. So I have to speak the blood pressure. In the name of Jesus Christ, lose your pressure. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I command you to come down. In Jesus' name, I bind you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to lose, to lose your pressure. Lose your pressure. Stop pressure the body. Stop pressure the sister. Lose your pressure. Be normal in the name of Jesus. Simmer down. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for healing. I pray for blessing. Bless the sister. I pray for blessing. Bless the sister, my God. Let there be a miracle in the house. Touch her from the crown of her head to the soul of her feet. Touch my brother, my God. Touch him again. Oh, my God. Let there be a new touch. Let it run through his system from his crown down to his soul. I come out of a sickness. Dry up. Dry up. And die, you sickness. I pray for cure. I pray for deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I pray for blessing. Lord, let one him be his speaker. Let fire come from his mouth. Bless him, my God. And remove every curse. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for blessing. Lord, I pray for blessing. Lord, I pray for blessing. Bless. Bless. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless. Where is the church? Help me now. Help me now. Somebody help me now. I need a miracle at the altar here. We can't go over without miracle. We need something to happen. Help me now. Help me now. Help me now, somebody. In the name of Jesus. I bind trials. I bind tribulation. See that I resist you. I oppose you. You are nothing but a devil from hell. You come to kill. But Jesus is here to give life. In the name of Jesus. My God, let there be a miracle here. I pray for change. I pray for transformation. I pray for illumination. My God, I pray for sanctification. Hear my cry, oh God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart, somebody heart, is overwhelmed. Somebody, my God, overwhelmed but I lead them to the rock rock of ages clear for me in the name of Jesus I pray for miracles in Jesus hallelujah Give me one more minute. Give me one more minute, please. Hold on, dear. Hold on, dear. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Pastor Smiley, where are you? Come here. Come, come. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. It's coming. It's coming. Come help me, brother. Come help me. In the name of Jesus. Come, Pastor Smiley. Come. Pray a little prayer here for me. Come and help me. The, 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 the spirit is willing. But the body is weak. But I'm praying for a miracle. Something must happen. Change must happen. Come here, Pastor. Come and pray a change and a closing prayer for change. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and lift your hand and begin to thank God for the blessing now. Begin to thank God for the answer. Come on. Begin to say, God, I receive it. Say, God, I receive it. Come on, open up your mouth and begin to receive your miracles tonight. Come on, receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on now, pull your blessing from the hands of God. Come on, reach out and grab it out of the hands of Jehovah. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we receive from your hands. Come on, church of God. Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. Receive the answer from God in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up those hands now. Come on, grab a hold of your miracle. Grab a hold of your breakthrough tonight. Don't leave here without your miracle. Don't leave here without the deliverance in the name of Jesus. Come on, pull it into your hands. Take it with you. Walk away with it. Go out with it. In the name of Jesus. Go home with your blessing. Go home with your deliverance. Go home with your sanctification. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head. To the sole of your feet. I speak into your spirit. I speak into your destiny right now. I speak into your life. That you will receive from God what he promised you. My sister, go home well in your body. Go home well in your spirit. My brother, go home healed. Go home delivered. Go home set free. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I send you home home. Go home where? Go home change. Go home here. Father, I thank you for the man of God tonight. Who has spoken from his heart. And our soul did kindle and burn within us as we hear the prophetic tonight. Father, we grab a hold of that word, Lord. That son will grab a hold of the word and say the word of God is precious to me. Let your double potion and your sick kind of glory hover it over him, Lord. And as he walk through these doors, we know that the Spirit of God is still at work. I know He's at work on you right now as we pray to close. He's working on you right now, touching you right now. Thank you for this night of challenge. Thank you for this night of destiny. We go home and we walk out in victory. Thank you for how you have spoken to us. We claim your miracles and your blessings. In the name of your son, we say thanks. We say thanks. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands for victory tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go home and believe God. Hallelujah. And tomorrow night we come back here to worship and invite you back. Bring some. How do we have a word for you?
Ele disse, não, não. 